Are you looking to expand your radio horizons? A quarter wave vertical antenna is a fantastic way to explore the HF bands. It's easy to build, easy to tune, and can provide excellent performance in both local and DX contacts. Hi, I'm Paul, W2PAK. Today we're going to talk about quarter wave vertical antennas. Quarter wave vertical antennas are my favorite antennas, by the way. Today we're going to talk about the theory of operation, we're going to simulate one, we're going to build one, and we're going to test one. Come join me. Let's talk about how a quarter wave vertical antenna works. Basically, it's very similar to a dipole antenna. The way I think about it is if you have a ground, and you have a vertical antenna. And you're feeding the vertical antenna at this point. The idea is, it's very similar to a dipole in that it's almost like there's a mirror image here. And you're feeding it to the ground. And the mirror image is the other part of the dipole antenna. And so that is how I think about a vertical antenna. It's not quite 100% right, but it's very, it's, it's pretty accurate. And so if you're feeding the antenna here at this point, basically your voltage is going to look like this. So you're going to have minimum voltage at the feed point, and you're going to have maximum voltage at the end of the antenna going to call this V. And then your current is going to be minimal at the end and max at the feed point. So let's talk about this for a second. Any antenna at the end is going to have zero current. The reason is there's nowhere to flow. Current has to flow and at the end of the antenna there's nowhere to flow. So at this point, you have high V, low I, <clears throat> so Z is V over I, and that equals something high. So you're gonna have high impedance at this point. At this point, you have low V, high I, so Z again, V over I, so this is going to be rel relatively low, and it turns out that this is somewhere between 30 and 40 ohms. At this point. So you can feed it with a regular coax, a 50 ohm coax. That's kind of nice. So at this point, I like to feed it with a ballon. Um, this would go to the coax, say, and then this would go to ground, and then this, we'll talk about this ground in a second. Let's talk about radials. So this ground, this mirror image, you have to have a good ground. Now, radials are going to look something like this underneath the antenna, and it's going to be hopefully 360 degrees. The better quality earth you have, the better ground you're going to have. So if it's over salt water, it's almost ideal. The, the drier the earth is, the worse off it's going to be. Now, I'm going to show you a plot here. If we're looking at the plot here on the left, so this is signal improvement. You can see at 10 radios, we're probably 1.8 or so dB improvement. At 20 radios, then you're a little more than two, and the return is not very high the more radios you add. If you look at the right plot here, we're looking at the top one, the uh, quarter wave lambda. So at 10, you know, you're 40, I don't know, two ohms. And then when you get to 20, you're 39 ohms, something like that. And so, you know, 10 radios at least is a good number to, to, to go with. Um, if you can put 20, I think you're doing better, but it depends on how you deploy it and uh, what your conditions are. The last thing I want to talk about is, I want to talk about this, um, this antenna for a second. And I want to make it multiband. So how can I make it multiband? Well, there are a couple ways, but my favorite way to do this is, is with traps. So let's say this is lambda over four for, say, 10 meters. Okay, so this is going to be 2.5 meters or so. And again, we're feeding it here. We have radials here to ground. And 
at this mo at this point, we're going to put a trap. We're going to talk about that in a second. And then maybe the next one from here to here is going to be, say, 15 meters. So what is that? That's 3.75 meters for 15 meters. So lambda over 4 would be 3.75. And let's say, so this is a dual band. And of course, you can continue as many as you want. This trap, what does this do? So basically, all it really is is a parallel resonator here. And if this is LC, and the idea here is simple, that in this case, at 10 meters, so at 28 megahertz, this is going to be resonant, and then the, the impedance of this is going to be really high when it resonates. So the idea is, at 10 meters, at 28 megahertz, it looks like this. It looks like, you know, a 2.5 meter um, antenna. And then at 15, it does not resonate. The, the Z is going to be relatively low. And then this looks like a 3.75 meter antenna. And you can continue to add traps and you can make this as many bands as you want, actually. Um, and the one I have on my dock is a six band um, quarter wave vertical antenna. So this is the basic theory. Let's simulate this. Let's see how it looks uh, on simulation. So this is our 10 meter vertical antenna. And if we look at the Smith chart, this is scanning the entire 10 meter band from 28 to 30. You can see that right in the middle, the SWR is 1.5. The, the impedance is 33 ohms. And that's kind of what we expected. So let's look at the uh, radiation pattern azimuth, of course, what I like about this is it's omnidirectional. That's a good and bad thing, of course. Uh, but, you know, you basically transmit and receive everything from everywhere. Um, of course, it's nice to have a directional antenna in that you can, you can direct where your energy goes, but it's also nice to be able to hear everybody and not worry about rotating your antenna. So there's pros and cons there. The elevation, you can see here that the directivity is pretty good. You can see that the maximum here is about 25 degrees. Pretty good for DX. Um, let's look at the SWR. So less than 2 from 228.1 to all the way to 30. So pretty nice antenna. Looks good on the simulation. Let's build it. Let's see how it works. This is a Balin, and you can see that I took uh, 2.5 meters of wire and made some radials. I made four radials, and then it just goes up this fushing pole to 2.5 meters. And it's a very simple. It took me, I don't know, 15 minutes or so. Let's go see what the SWR looks like. So this is the SWR. You can see it goes from 1.5, let's call it, to about 2.2. 2.3, and that's the entire 10 meter band. So I ran Whisper, and Whisper is the weak signal propagation uh, system. And you can see this is the receive side. Many stations in Europe, station in Iceland, some in South America. Um, pretty good receive coverage there. And then on the transmit side, you can see, oh, there's one very Arctic and one in Australia, but also Europe, one in Africa, right off the coast there, one in South America. So pretty good on 10 meters for a very simple antenna. This is this was a one watt uh, using Whisper. I want to mention also that uh, the Balin I used is basically a common mode choke. I made a video about common mode chokes. I'll put a link in the in the description. Also, I want to mention that um, I'm going to put the lengths of different um, antennas for different frequencies in the description. So there you have it. Quarter wave vertical antennas are awesome. They're easy to deploy. They're cheap. They perform well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. If you want more content, please hit subscribe. 73, my friends.